The very same day that my guest today, Mary Flor Toniato, and I scheduled this interview about her book, Money Manifestation and Miracles, A Guide to Transforming Women's Relationship with Money, I received an invitation to participate in a sacred money women's circle in my hometown that explored the topic of abundance from a feminine perspective. I always try to pay attention to synchronicity when it shows up like that, so I attended the Women's Circle, and I'm so glad that I did because of the way it held space for me to begin exploring my own story surrounding money in a meaningful way. As I sat in that circle and listened to woman after woman openly and honestly share about their money stories, victories, and challenges, I got really present to just how deep and important the conversation about our relationship to money, which is what Mary Flora and I will be discussing today, really is. In addition to being the author of Money, Manifestation, and Miracles, Mary Flor is the CEO and founder of Power with Soul, where she specializes in helping ambitious women entrepreneurs and professionals reach financial prosperity and success while fulfilling their social promise in the world. I've been very much looking forward to this conversation, and I'm excited to have Mary Flor here with me today. So welcome, Mary Flor, and thanks for being here. Hey, Kim, I'm so excited to be here. Thank you for having me. And I love that women's sacred circle of of money that you just described. That's fantastic. It was a really delicious experience, and, and I'll talk a little bit more about it as we go, but just to, to hear just this such a wide variety of histories and experiences and but it's all a relationship that we have. So it was it was pretty cool and great timing as I was preparing for our interview. I know. Is I mean, and there are no coincidences, right? That's the very first sentence in my book. And uh, and it's true. <laughs> yes, totally. <laughs> I thought that a good place for us to start just so our, our listeners can get to know you a little bit is by having you give us the Reader's Digest version of your money story and and how you came to write Money Manifestation of Miracles. Sure. Well, everybody, like you say, everybody has a money journey. And uh, for women, it is um, a really deep uh, and meaningful um, experience because it mirrors everything in their lives. And for me, I my money story and journey is uh, at one point in my life, I was a single mother living from paycheck to paycheck. And um you know, there was a point in time there when I really had to make a decision of that I wanted uh, money to help me to really live out my fullest purpose instead of feeling that I'm, you know, money is the master and I'm the servant. I wanted it to be the other way around. And I really got on to this journey when, um, you know, after that I had to, I started in, in corporate and I went up the corporate ladder and I became an executive. And, you know, throughout that time, Kim, I had forgotten about my own money story. And because at that time, you know, everything was um, going really well financially for me and I had reinvented my life and my career. And then when I became an entrepreneur, I made the decision to, um, you know, start my, my professional coaching company. It all came back to me, all the feelings of and the deep emotions of, of, of feelings of self-worth and feelings of deserving that many women have regarding money. And when I started to coach women, I started to figure this out, that it, this was the same situation that I had um, encountered. And then I really started working with them on transforming the relationship with money. And this is how I got inspired to write the book in the first place, because I saw this shocking statistic that um, despite the fact that in the U.S. women-owned businesses generate more than $1.3 trillion in revenues, only 3.3% of them are making over 500000 and only and and much less than ten two uh, percent are making over a million dollars, and so I thought, you know what? Now is the time for us to change the current state of affairs for women, and um, this is why I was just so empowered to write this because at the same time I also noticed when working with women and for my own personal experience that when women are empowered with money. They become difference makers. Mm. 
and they transform their lives and they help transform the lives of others in their families and their communities at large. Um, because for women, um, for us sharing and, um, and sharing what we have in terms of money is very, very important. Mm-hmm. And and it's really timely with what's going on with the women's empowerment movement and the Me Too movement and the women's marches and and how and that seems like it's all connected. Oh yeah, absolutely. You know, I often wonder. There's a timing for everything, as we were just talking about, and the book is coming out really at the perfect time because, yes, it's true, women have made great strides. Uh, there is so much more work still to do, though, in terms of the fact that we're still lagging in, for instance, in income and in earnings, and there's still, still this wage gap. There's still, you know, few leadership roles for women in corporate. Uh, there's still, you know, barriers to getting into politics and business income and so forth. And so now really is that time for us collectively as a, as a society to empower women because, you know, when women um, have money, it on average, night. 90 cents of every dollar that they earn, they reinvest it back into family, into education, into nutrition, and into health. And so imagine what kind of a world we'd be living in when women are empowered with money. And so it could just really better um, our world. Definitely, definitely. And you wrote Money Manifestation and Miracles specifically about women's relationship with money. But in the book, you say that in regards to money and really everything else in our world, that a balance of both feminine and masculine is needed. So it seems like a lot of the ideas that you're writing about are also applicable to men, right? Oh, absolutely. Um, men um, can also find value in reading this. Absolutely. Um, you know, I wrote, I did write it for women for, you know, the specific reasons that I had just mentioned, and to really, you know, get them empowered and becoming difference makers. Uh, but yes, both women and men have um, a relationship with money. And when I'm talking about the feminine versus the masculine, I'm not even necessarily talking about male or female. I'm just talking about the energy of it. So the feminine energy of of money is, you know, we like there's sharing of it. There's generosity. There's paying it forward. And at the same time, sometimes for women that can get too, too much on the other side and not enough in terms of, you know, really having a clear sense of boundaries. And so this is where one can take the, the, the masculine energy and really, um, you know, put money in the context as a tool and move forward with it in a straightforward way. So there's, you know, needs to be a, a balance of everything. The yeah, and everything. <laughs> yeah, in everything, yes. Right, right. And um, talk to us a little bit about the the feminine connection to money, specifically the feminine. Yes, the feminine. So the feminine connection to money is, um, I mean, I labeled it as such is because I started to really um, get the sense of the unique relationship that women have with money. Um, because, and to better understand that, we have to, you know, just dive a little into the, the female brain, actually, um, because the female brain, we have more um, connecting brain cells um, than men do. And so hence, women can multitask a lot more. And there's greater capacity for communication, for emotion and for language and, and even for memory. And then for women, we take this um, and how we also view money. So for women, money isn't um, straightforward as it is for men. Uh, we don't see money in isolation. We see money as connected to emotions, to relationships, and to meaning. And so for women, we're likely to take our strong feelings uh, that we have about you know family and our relationships and its impact when we're making uh, decisions related to money. And so because for women really at the highest pinnacle feminine expression of money is using money to express our love, to take care of ourselves and, and to share it with others who aren't as fortunate. So that is the 
actual natural inclination of the feminine connection to money. Mm-hmm. And you say that money is emotional currency for women. And what is really running the show in our lives are our unconscious feelings and emotions regarding money. Will you unpack that a little bit for us? Yes, sure. So emotional currency for women is just, you know, we just talked about the whole um, emotions of, of women connected to everything. And it's the same thing with money. So, you know, I say that money is um, connected to our sense of self-worth, our self-confidence, and our feelings of safety and security. And so these feelings put together can either help a woman move forward or or keep her stuck in um, in her relationship with money, but not just with money, in a re- reflection of what's happening in other parts of, of her life, because money is a mirror to that. But really, um, also what's driving that, too, are the beliefs and the mindset that may be limiting um, a woman because, you know, it's no longer serving her, but it's still a belief that she has. And... Um, this book, what it really does is it, it, it will address all of those um, fears that a woman may have um, around money or a sense of self-worth and, you know, feelings of her self-confidence. And then what it does, it does the how and, a, and the guide of, you know, releasing these emotions and these limiting beliefs that are no longer serving her. Right, and when right. she does that, And when she does that, that's when the magic starts to happen. You know, that's when women can really then um, feel more empowered with money and, you know, become difference makers because that's the next evolution of the growth. Right. right. Well, my personal money story provides a good example of how our unconscious feelings can impact things. Um, because when I started my skipping project with and the skipping movement with iSkip.com and I was getting international publicity and time and people and Newsweek and the BBC and I was so emboldened by what felt like a divine intervention in my life that I was, I said, I'm going to leap and the net will follow. Like, I'm going to put that to the test. And I quit my corporate job to follow my heart. My entrepreneurial father kept saying, how's the cash register going to ring? And I would just say, it's, it's my spirit. It's, it's my calling and spirit will show me the way. And ultimately in the short term, that didn't go very well. In the long term, the net has followed. <laughs> um, <laughs> but now that I am, you know, this far into it and I look back, I realize that kind of like the law of attraction where, Our unconscious fears, meaning that we aren't even really aware of them, are impacting our process just as much as what we're consciously saying and putting out into the world. Like if you would have talked to me consciously then, I was saying all the right things, but Mm. I had these underlying beliefs and fears that I wasn't even aware of yet. Um, So I would be curious, what would you say about how we can begin to unearth and release those fears and emotional blocks that are preventing money from flowing in our lives hopefully before we fall off the financial cliff like I did. (laughs) Mm. (laughs) Well, and thank you for sharing your story, Kim. Um, Well, first of all, you are right in that uh, there's a lot of unconscious drives, and but they do surface. There are signs in the um, on your external world um, because you 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 know when the energy just isn't flowing. Sometimes you have to fi- uh, follow where the money is, and you know you're not finding that it's actually there. There's something else that's going on, and this is where this book I talk about it as an, a journey inward, and that is you use the all the you know tools and the strategies that I talk about in the book and um, and whether it's you know your mindset or whether it's a specific fear that you've identified uh, within when you turn within and you really get honest with yourself what is it that I'm really really afraid of and what do I have to believe for something to be true Because the funny thing about our mindset is we always look to our external world to validate what we're thinking inside. You know, first of all is, um, you know, I really, I really can't, um, I can't get any clients or, you know, I really can't make any money as fast as it comes in. It goes out. It's a feast and famine. That's really, you know, what I believe is my money story. Then you will look 
on the outside to see the validation of that in the external world. And you will um, find it because this is a self-professing kind of uh, uh, universe that we have that always says yes to us. And so the the key to that is changing the the inner mindset first and then aligning your emotions with that for it to start to show up on the in the external world. Mm-hmm. And and one of the practical ideas you offer in the book to help with that process is to keep a money gratitude journal or just a money journal. So how does that work and why is it important? Um, I love I love the money gratitude journal and gratitude journals in general. So, you know, um, everything that we whatever we focus on expands and it grows. So if we give attention to negativity, we're going to feel that in some some of our experience. And the flip side is if we give a lot of attention to abundance and gratitude and joy, that will expand in our world, too. And so. A lot of people are probably familiar with the concept of journaling and, and even gratitude journals. And so it's the same concept, but I just um, expanded it a little bit to include anything that you're grateful for related to money. And it could be any anything that's simple. Like, for example, in my case, I went out and I did some shopping and um, I get to the cash register and I remembered that I have a gift card. So that's great because, you know, the universe gave me a gift through this gift card. I didn't have to uh, pull out my wallet in that way. Then the same day I go out with a friend who treats me for lunch. So I didn't pull out my wallet. So I'm really grateful. Then I ended up at a coffee shop and and ended up getting a free drink, (laughs) which was great. And so my my whole gratitude um, feelings were expanding. It was broadening. And then I get home and a check was waiting for me that I had been um, uh, waiting to receive. And so later that day, I wrote in my gratitude journal, um, about the money, about how fortunate I felt and how expansive that feeling felt and how grateful I was. And um, I set up my life in such a way to do the same thing, and I only expect the good things. Mm. One of the ideas that came from the the sacred money circle that I was in was similar, and but it was in just thanking the money, like as it goes out into the world and you release it, just thanking it, which I thought was a, a nice a nice way to be in gratitude as well. No, that's beautiful. It is true. It is to to thank it um, because th- there is an energy with that, and we we expend energy um, in terms of the exchange of energy with money. So when you release it out into the universe in a grateful way, that way it it will come back to you. Maybe not in that moment, and maybe not from the same source, but it will come back to you at some point in time. And then in addition to the the gratitude journal, it seems like kind of going back to the the unconscious beliefs and fears that we might not even be aware of yet, that journaling would be a powerful process for that as well. Oh, absolutely. It's it's actually, you know, it's even if you were just to sit there and sit with, you know, if you, you're going through some sort of a, a problem that you want to really unearth, writing is um, is cathartic in that way in that you know it it will come out and then you look at it afterwards and you'll you're going to see a theme or some sort of a, awareness is going to happen because you know you're peeling the onion right so something is going to bubble up to the surface and um and the, the important thing there is not to be scared by it is to allow it because once it comes forward then you it's in your consciousness, then you're actually able to do something with it. And yeah, that's, yeah. Yeah. That's powerful. Shines the light on it. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And if you notice everything's be the, the light right now is shining on women's empowerment, isn't it? Yes, it is. I yes. love it. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> I also, given my own uh, journey skipping myself into financial ruin, I really appreciated <laughs> the section of the book where you talked about the benefits of failing because it certainly has oh. it taught me so much about my relationship with money. And I, you know, I just thought it was just there from when I was a kid. I mean, it's, it taught me so much. So we talk a little bit about failing and and maybe give us an example of something that you you've learned through failure in your life. 
Well, I um, I had to talk about failure because we don't talk about it enough. We talk a lot about success, and failure is there's if we can see it for what it really is, which is a lesson, and if we can see that there is a golden nugget there, and we learn from it, then we can move forward. But, you know, if if you haven't learned the lesson yet, it keeps coming back, but it comes back in different forms. It'll come back maybe through money. It'll come back through situations. It'll come back through people. It's the same thing in different masks. Um, I remember some friends used to say to me, oh, I can't stand my job. So they go run and get another job. And then the, the same people of the same kind of dynamics are in that job too, right? <laughs> so so um, for me, my epic failure for me was um, having a very short-lived marriage mm. and that produced a beautiful, beautiful baby girl, but it was like epically uh, short. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, you know, it sunsetted as fast as it started kind of thing. And uh, really for me that, you know, um, It brought me down in terms, really down in terms of, you know, the way I saw things, you know, I was embarrassed and, and there's the shame aspect of it, you know, which is like a deeper sense of feeling like, you know, I'm not worthy, I'm not good enough. And I think that that brought me down to such a point where the only where the only other way that I could go was up. Mm -hmm. And, um, and so I was consciously working you know so i'm 23 at this point you know still green i don't know how to cook or do the laundry it's it's like a catastrophe right (laughs) but what i did was i really made a decision of exactly how i wanted my life to be and in the next two years I completely changed everything around. And I that's how I ended up meeting my, my husband, my soulmate. And uh, because I consciously channeled, I used the core manifesting process that I talk about in this book, I completely changed and reinvented my life. Mm, yeah, it's amazing how that happens. <laughs> yeah. And sometimes, you know, some people like we, you know, you get a little nudge and, and a signal from from the universe, but we don't listen, you know, you get a you get a ton of brick and sometimes people still don't listen. So sometimes you just get right down to the bottom to go, okay, I was on the wrong path. Yes, this is going to be the right path. Yeah, yes. yes. And so it's so important to remember that when we're in the middle of the hard times too. Oh, absolutely. Because nobody, you know, we we would love to avoid it all, wouldn't we? We would just like, Eek, I don't want any of that, right? But if it's your time to have the lesson and for you to learn the lesson for good so you can move up and you can elevate yourself to the next level where you're supposed to be, then you got to go through it. Yeah. 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 Skipping past it. Skipping yeah, yeah. past it doesn't work. <laughs> <Part of fun. laughs> you have, you have from it though. Yeah. Uh, so now that I've come back from my, you know, this this dramatic financial story and and, and I've, I've found my net and I'm, you know, I I find myself having wanting to kind of cling to the money that I have versus trusting it to flow in and out of my life. And so I'm curious what you would say about how we can uh, begin to trust ourselves about money and kind of get the inner critic that's that worries out of the way. Yeah. Um, well, the thing with trusting the money and like everything else, you know, you start small and you're building a muscle, aren't you? And um, and you you have to um, really have this deep connection if if you have some sort of a spiritual practice that you. Uh, provide and sometimes it's just gratitude it can just be that you know you don't have to have anything fancy um and that inner knowing that i can do this i've got this this is for my highest good and i know that it will come back to me it's almost an affirmation that you know you one can can create you know could be anything as money flows out more you know flows in because mm-hmm. i am i am doing what i love you know whatever that is that you what we have to do is we have to get to our subconscious to take it in as um in, as at a cellular level to believe it for it to start showing up in the external world because then we will have change the way we behave towards that 
particular situation. And so, you know, one foot in front of the other and just really get to trusting yourself, go inward, and that abundance is your natural state. It really is for the all of us, and we spend more time um, running away from it than we do trying to just ease into it. Yeah, yeah. And just knowing, too, that it's all, it's all part of the process of awareness and growth, I think, is, is key, too. Exactly. Yeah. Well, we have about 30 seconds left. So I was just curious if you have any parting thoughts for or, or what you think the most important thing that you want someone to know is about healing their relationship around money. I want them to know that it's okay that whatever your current or past challenges are with money, they don't dictate who you are or dictate your future. You're the one in charge right now. So use this book, read it, nourishingly put all of the steps together on how to transform your life, not just financially, but emotionally and spiritually as well. Uh, Thank you so much, Mary Fleur, for, for leading us in this conversation and for writing your book. Oh, thank you so much. What a pleasure. I I am so, so excited and love being part of the New World Library family. Yay. For more information about Mary Fleur Toniato and Money Manifestation and Miracles, visit her online at www.maryfleur.co. That's M-E-R-I-F-L-O-R dot C-O. Thanks so much. And I'll look forward to connecting on future episodes of New World Now. Thank you for listening to New World Now with Kim Corbin from New World Library. New World Library publishes books and audios that inspire and challenge us to improve the quality of our lives and our world. For more information about their books and authors, you can visit them online at newworldlibrary.com.